Hello friends, I'm still not Jim Nance and I'm still not comfortable in my chair. This is Kurt Bergland and I want to address this video to some questions that I've gotten lately about pine tar baseball and how you play. And this video deals with a part of the game that I think is fantastic. And that has to do with range checks. If you've watched my videos, you'll hear me say every once in a while, get to the kitchen, it's a range check. Oh my God, I smell gas. Well, there's a reason I say that. First of all, it's a fun pun because range on defense and range in the kitchen, see it's a double thing there, never mind. Um, and the second thing, of course, is that my mom was constantly convinced she was smelling gas when we had an electric stove. What? So, anyway, uh, what I'm going to show you is the two types of range checks. So that when I'm doing a game and you hear me say, got to the kitchen, you'll know which one I'm talking about, even if you don't know what I've rolled uh, necessarily on the batter's card. We're going to start with a look at the chart that sort of points you to what kind of range check we're doing, and then we're going to look at a few examples. So these are Pine Tar Baseball range checks. On the chart for Pine Tar Baseball, actually the back side of the chart, because there's only one page of charts for Pine Tar Baseball, front and back, there are two types of range checks. One is a positive defensive roll table. It comes up only in two examples, and that is, and we if we suppose that these are our dice, if you're rolling a, and you have a hit on a roll of 11 or 22, then you're going to re-roll these two dice and see where the hit went. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if we re-roll, suppose we had a hit on 11 or 22, and we re-roll and we get a 49. We look down this column and we see that 49 falls between 41 and 55. So it went to center field. The result would be a flyout if the fielder is positive. But if the fielder is negative or neutral, it becomes a single to center, a hit with the location of center field. So one more time, we had a hit on a roll of 11 or 22. We rolled our two dice. We have a 49 that falls between uh, 51 or 41 and 55. We know that the fielder whose range is being checked is the center fielder. And we know that if it's positive on this whole chart, you have to have a positive fielder to get an out. If you don't, if the fielder is negative or neutral, it becomes a single to that field. So let's change it up and look at another example. Suppose that we rolled a 29. Well, a 29 is a number that falls between 27 and 40. So it's hit to the second baseman. The second baseman has to be a positive fielder and it becomes a ground out. He takes away that hit if he's positive but if he's negative or neutral, it becomes a single to center, a hit to center field. All right, and that is your positive defensive roll table. Now let's look at an example. Suppose for the positive defensive roll table that we had Dave Concepcion up against Raleigh Fingers. So we'd look in the versus right-handed pitcher column of the splits. And suppose that we rolled 
and 11. And 11 is a single for Concepcion because it falls between 5 and 21. All right, so now we come back to the positive defensive roll table and we roll our two dice. We have a 25. It's hit to right field. If our right fielder is a positive defender, he's going to make the catch. If not, it's going to be a single or a hit, a single in this case, to right field. Well, Raleigh Fingers' right fielder in this case happens to be Matty Lou. So Concepcion hit a uh, potential single to right field. But Matty Alou can take it away if he is a positive fielder. It becomes a flyout. Matty Alou will catch it. So we look at Matty Alou's card to see what his range is. There's two ways to tell. One is if it's red. If his position's in red, you know he's a negative fielder. But in case you're wondering, you can always check down below. And his range is a G, which also means negative, G for negative. And so he falls under the negative or neutral column, and it becomes a single, a hit, to right field. So Alou could have taken the hit away with a great play, a positive defensive play, but he didn't because his range was not good enough. And that is your positive defensive roll table. All right. Now, there's one other kind of range check in Pine Tar Baseball. It is a negative defensive table. Anytime you have a ground out or a fly out on rolls of 68 or 88 on the batter's card. All right. So, suppose that, so, what happens, let's look at this first before we do an example. On a 66 or an 88, whenever those are rolled with our two D10s, any fielder, wherever it's hit, to, so whatever 66 or 88 means on that card, if the defender is positive or neutral, Whatever's on the card stands. If, however, the defender is negative, then that out turns into a hit. Could be a ground out, could be a fly out, but whatever it is on 66 and 88, if the defender is negative, it becomes a base hit. So let's look at another example. Here we have Concepcion up against Fingers, one more time. And let's suppose, just for fun, that we roll, if I can make my fingers work, no pun intended, Raleigh. <laughs> my fingers work, and it's Raleigh fingers. <laughs> okay, so if it's an 88, Concepcion hits a fly ball to left field, but it's an 88, so it's a range check. Get to the kitchen, I smell gas. All right, so it's an 88. Normally, a fly out to left because it falls between 87 and 96, but because it's 88, we have to check the negative defensive table. Well, Raleigh Fingers, <clears throat> left fielder for most of 1972, was a man... I like to call Joe Rudy. All right, so Joe Rudy, we check his range. It's in blue, which tells you he's neutral, but you can also look down here in the range section and there's an N, which stands for neutral. Blue is neutral, N stands for neutral. All right, so we look here now. So we rolled an 88, it's a fly out to left, any position, so we know Joe Rudy qualifies for that. Is Joe Rudy a positive or a neutral defender? Well, 
he's neutral. So there's no change. The flyout stays a flyout to left field. If, however, it had been hit somewhere else, say to right field, Matty Alou's negative range would have turned that out on Concepcion's card into a hit because he just wouldn't get there to make the play. Give you another example. If George Hendrick was the fielder and he was in center, although in the corner of his slots, he's a neutral defender in 72. In center field, he was negative. So if it's hit to center field, Hendrick's not going to get there. He doesn't have the range to get there, and he doesn't make the play. It falls in for a base hit. Um, all right, so I'll give you one more example. Suppose that it had been hit to shortstop. All right, so now we have a green color. What does that mean? Well, green is positive. You can also look down here for range. P stands for positive. So if the ball would have been hit to Campanaris, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because he's a positive defender, no change, the out would be recorded. So notice what happens here. On both of these range tables, if you are a positive defender, you're going to make the play. If you are a neutral defender, you're not going to get there on rolls of 11 or 22. That's going to turn into a hit. But if you're a neutral defender on rolls of 66 and 88, you will make the play. And if you're a negative defender, it's going to go for a hit on this chart and on this chart. So positive defenders always make the play. Neutral defenders, it's 50-50. And if you're negative, you're never getting there. And that is how you make range checks for pine tar baseball. So the next time you have to get to the kitchen because mom smells gas with an electric stove, you know what you're doing. Thanks for joining me. I'm Kurt Berglund. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel. And join me for my next game of pine tar baseball as we continue to work our way through the great teams of the 20th century, volume two. But there's lots of demos on my channel. Check out the playlist. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. So long, everybody.